y'all. Thanks for watching Dee Dee with my favorite groomer. And it is bright and early at 8 a.m. And I am so tired today. So we have Cotton here who I've groomed. This will be our second groom. She's a referral, uh, uh, the owner, ho owner, Melissa is the owner, is a referral from another client of mine who just, I don't know if you watched, um, the Cocker Spaniel Go-Go, she has passed away, right? And she was coughing, I loaded some coughing videos. I know, you're so excited. You're so excited. He misses mommy. You look at the camera, look at the camera, you're okay, you're okay. So anyway, she brought uh, Go-Go's mom, um, not, Go not Jojo, but Go-Go sent her to me. Melissa has uh, come up here from Houston because she lost everything um, due to that, that hurricane hit recently here in 2017. So I'm looking at her file and we are, we are going to do a, we've done a seven all over, but since some of you uh, have requested like poodle groom, really? Really? You're howling? Poodle grooms? This guy's 15. Poodle grooms, I'm going to do him on video. Uh, okay. And we did a seven all over last time. He's not being brushed very often at home. He's got a thin coat. So I'm going to try to brush him and do something different. So I'll just kind of guide you as we go. And there's a bunch of little weird stuff here that we might change up. But here we go. Okay. Okay. Let's calm down. Calm down. I'm moving forward. Okay, come here. Let's turn around this way. Let's turn around this way. And let's do a sanitary first. We're gonna do a sanitary first because I have a tin on my clippers. Check his armpits here while I've got my tin. Well, I need to put on my face mask. This just helps me not breathe in all the fine hairs that we shave off. I believe that they stick, my belief is they actually stick into our lungs and they don't go anywhere. We're, how are we gonna get those out, you guys? If you need a face mask, email me, contact me, we'll get you set up. She likes a poofy tail here because he doesn't really have a tail, so something left there is what she likes. She, she said barely touch the ears if, if, if possible. So I've got my tin, and I'm going to do the clean face, and it looks like we've done the, um, I followed the last pattern, so he has a beard, so I'm going to take my tin, I'm going to lift this ear, and come right at the ear, and draw a line to the eyeball here, and come in, and just go all the way around it. It doesn't look like I've really shaved his whole muzzle last time, every dog's different, right? I know. So I'm not going to shave it all the way down, but I'm going to see. I can't hardly tell because some of it's kind of grown in. I bet I did. Okay. He needs to move forward here. Okay, let's see what you guys are seeing here. Okay, so we do right, right into this ear area. Clean all this out. Watch your flaps. I actually want to be on the other side of this camera. That's half the problem here. So I can really put my clippers flat here. Draw that line. It's kind of already there. And he's been doing this a long time, so he gets it. Here, go reverse right in here, which is your 10 now, and I'm going to come down right here. Oh no. And then when we come back, I'm going to, it's been in my head since she said I'd barely take anything off, I'm thinking four, the four guard, okay? So I'm going to come back now with my 
I need, I'm going to come back now with my 40 blade and do the pads. And since he's not standing up, let's go ahead and throw this dog up, stand under him. And this will help him stand and um, relax while I lift that up, twist it tight. We've got the dog up stand here now so he can stand up and I can move each leg, you know, and, and work with the pads. Giving him the option to rest his body on that. We're doing teddy bear feet, which is not clean feet. So if you're doing another poodle that you want to do clean feet, you're going to take your ten reverse around the toes on the top, which are digits, right? So I'm not taking a lot off his body, right? So I'm not going to bring his tin all the way up into the top of the back pad where you can kind of see it more. If I, if I was doing a tin down or something, then I wouldn't care, but just kind of staying right into the pad area. I'm like, dude, he's doing a lot of talking, but I'm like looking at my folder and seeing if it says anything about biting. And it doesn't. You notice how he was sitting the whole time until I got the dog up stand under him? It's, man, it really makes grooming us just so much easier. Um, I don't have to hold him up. I get tired, uh, not, not tired so fast. Okay, while I'm in here, I'm going to do the nails. They're not that bad, so if they're not that bad, either skip them or just take a, a little bit off, a tiny bit. I haven't seen them in, I want to say, September. So a month and a half, I'm going to go ahead and just take a sliver off here. Put your foot down. You, if they move, which they're an animal, they're alive, just move them back onto that stand. What I need to do is go ahead and, um, so you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but the coat is not really all that brushed. So for me, but it's not very thick either, and he's an older dog. So just to give you an idea, maybe I'll try to do this so you can kind of see. This is not brushed. It's not very thick, but it's not brushed either, right? Right, so, excuse me, I have something in my eye. To do this, um, right, you want to go ahead and just brush the entire dog, right? Because the guard, I've done this before, brush and guard, brush and guard, it's not worth it. Just stop what you're doing, brush the whole dog, guard the whole dog, use the guard everywhere, and then go to the bath, so. Personally, I don't want, I wouldn't wet all that. If it's tangled now, what do you think happens when you wet it? So some of you guys have, have watched my video and said, why don't you just bathe the dog right away? Well, if you've had long hair like me and you teased it and then you got it wet, it doesn't get out any easier. That's my opinion. So I'm going to groom him first, bathe him, dry him, and then groom him again. And that seems to me the best way to do it. Little by little, pulling all the hairs into the comb. You want to brush everything Every, from down, bottom to top. Like started here, came all the way around, came back up. 
He's on the morning and stuff. I'm gonna come back to the ears and the head separate. Kind of um, separate it so it doesn't feel like it's overwhelming. You know, draw a line like this is a little square I'm working on. So foot first. Practice your left hands if you groom a lot. That way if you're using both your hands, you may not be perfect at the left or your opposite hand. But at least it gives your, um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I always try to use both hands. But off camera I use it a lot, I practice a lot. Okay, if this is in your way, go ahead and move it out. He's gonna sit down though, so. Maneuvering the neck, bow, neck, grab the jaw, not the neck esophagus. This, you can see, this is not tight at all. He's okay. I don't trust any of them except for Max. So I've got it pretty good around his neck, but it is very loose. It's very, it's very important though to make sure you are keeping, if you're gonna move around, you need that tight, you know. Move the jaw here, so come up, make sure I got everything under there. Okay, I'm separating it with this noose here. If you don't like that word, it's called a groom loop. I sell everything I'm using, so if you need something, please email me. Go to my website, myfavoritegroomer.com. Contact me. I'll build an order specifically for you and your needs. Brushes, combs, everything. Okay? Because if you have the right tools, you won't have to buy anything else like the whole duration of your pet's life. And I've learned that because I've tried all these kinds of tools. You lose money, they sit in a drawer, go donate them to a rescue in your area. They will use them. So we're doing this ear. Mom like, I like the ear, so we'll just, if we don't need to trim the ears, we won't. She wants them that fluffy and stuff, that's fine. If she were to come in and have lots of um, water damage, I would say I don't really want to do that if they're not going to be maintained at home, okay? So it's just up to you how you want to handle it. He doesn't need to stand right now. So, well, I would like him to stand. I'm going to have him stand. Here's that. Mm. Again, now you're separating yourself and just working on the ears alone. Use your own fingers and your hand as your back brush so you're not just grinding it into their own skin. That will help that. Just like applying to hard surface, it will help that comb work faster. Use your fingers as your back. That's how I know, like, if you come out this brush uh, like a hard, yeah, it'll hurt. But if I can put my my hand here and do all this, and the dog is screaming. I had a client um, email me, a YouTube watcher, email me and say her dog always whines. Well, it's possible, but I know it's not painful. This is not painful. Okay, this is not painful. But if you brush for an hour, just a, a certain circumstances can change everything, right? And I'm not there during every circumstance, so I don't know everything that's going on out there. You take a dog that's very matted and you try to brush the mats out, no, that's not happening. That's not going to happen. They're not going to like that. You take uh, some of the, like right here around the uh, ear, it's much more sensitive skin. You brush hard there, that might hurt, you know. You brush the belly really hard, that might hurt. That's real sensitive skin down there. And uh, you see me kind of do this, right? It's, it's got the hooks. I, um, the brush has hooks, so I don't need to dig hard. I just need to get that brush working. So I try not to do a lot of pressure with the brushing. I'm going fast, but it's barely touching the skin. You just want that to hook onto the hair. And I think if it was very painful, he would be he would be screaming right now. Look at his head, you guys. Oh my goodness. 
Look at your face. Okay, so we're going to come back with the four guard on my tin. I might even do a two. Let's just take check, check the two guard. Barely nothing. I'm doing a four. Otherwise, I'll see her pretty soon if I don't take something off. Even though she wants it long, I'm going to go ahead and do a four guard with the ten blade. You have your um, dog up stand here. Skip some areas and come back so you can move that out of your way. We'll move it like that. I'm just moving it to the side so I can do this leg and all that. That's a good idea. I can do that on that side too. Obviously, if you're using the dog up stand, use it under the belly. Move it from under the belly if you're shaving it, I mean. the whole grooming. You're gonna moan the whole grooming, my friend. Mm, you got this little moaning thing you do. <laughs> okay. Remember, come down, fade that. It's, it's gonna fade on its own just by... There you go. Looks good. <laughs> so toffee. It's, the haircut is happening without you trying so hard, so get in there and get out. Like, don't stay here too long. If you have other things you need to do, come down. Save yourself some time on the legs here. Just come down with the guard, but don't sit here and stay here for 20 minutes. Or you might as well have gone down to, like, the seven blade. Okay. Same thing. Well, down means I went with the grain of the hair. So I'm just going to take this back down like that. Go up here, you're going to go side up and back and bring all that. I kind of went down on it, but it doesn't matter. Back. Okay. Kind of looking down, that makes it difficult, but watch the eyeballs, but bring it up and back. You can kind of come back like this if you want to. This is like, you're going to hand scissor it anyway, so just don't do it um, deep. Make sure you guys can see what it is. So back, here you can go, twist that. Learn how to twist your clippers in your hand if you're doing quite a few dogs, that'll help you. Just coming up here. Now see, the difference between me and some other groomers is I'm not here trying to do a show groom. I am here doing a one hour groom, okay? So if you have time and you have the dog for two, three hours, the cut's gonna look completely different. Might look softer, might look gorgeous. Um, this is a economy groom. <laughs> It's a one hour groom, okay? You can only do so much in one hour. So this is what I like to accomplish, fast, quick grooming. This is what kind of grooming I do. Everyone has their own style, their own attempt to what they're trying to do. I do this because I have a lot of senior dogs and I don't want to have them here very long. So you, if you don't know anything about that, then just you know keep your opinion to yourselves but there's some I've been watching some I watch other groomers and there's some really beautiful cuts but I know it takes more than an hour to accomplish it so you do what you want to do and if you have time to spend hours with a dog go for it do it I need to wrap this up in an hour head to toe bath to dry in the door out the door in an hour and that's what I want to do and that's my choice Okay. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here scissoring, but just for the sake of y'all watching that wanted some poodle, you are like, how do I get that poodle head? I do a real fast poodle head, right? Because, again, I'm not here trying to do a show, show, and all that stuff, okay? 
I'm here to get this dog in good shape, looking hot and sexy, and getting home. Let's get back on the couch. And I need you to focus, so I'm gonna have him back up on the dog up stand so he can stop sitting on me. And that way I can maybe hopefully get into his face here. Okay, so he's got little stuff just in his face here. I'm gonna bring this around. He's, I got, drew that line already, so I'm just bringing that up and up and back. I'm trying to leave that hair on his ear, but there's some stuff kind of sticking out here, so I'm just gonna go down with it. Watch your skin there. If you don't know where it's at, put your finger in there. I've done a lot with my guard. You don't know. Like guard is going to save you a lot of scissor time. That's work on your work your hands are, are doing. Um, if you want to scissor a lot, go ahead. But if you do this a lot, I mean, it's just wear and tear on those tendons on your on your hand. So something a lot of groomers we don't really look at, but I do. I care about my body. I'm not using thinning shears. It's something you guys can see. I hardly have to pull that out, but you get a different look on a cut when you use the thinning shears a lot. You actually also get a lot of a buzz hair in the eyeballs. I hate that. Um, but it would be a very soft, fluffy powder look if I use my thinning shears or blending shears a lot. And you see that in other, other videos, I'm sure. I'm just literally cutting the hair. You know what I'm saying? I'm not fading it or blending it. I'm cutting it. Um, so just different approaches to what you want to accomplish and give it a day. It's going to look, grows in really nicely. You can move this here like that and come up with this ear hair like this. Get that, those prickly ones sticking straight out. Okay. I know the mom really likes the fluffy kind of look, but she still wants a haircut, right? Okay. Okay. So I want to come in. I'm going to use my comb again. Let me come and chisel this up here. Know where your skin's at. Are you going to cut somebody? Even the slight move on an animal is not okay. So if you put, you just move the quickly, move the head quickly. You see me pushing and pulling the head here. It doesn't hurt them. But if you're using scissors and, scissors and clippers, it could be a dangerous situation. You need to move the dog's head, move it. And keeping that round, right? I'm kind of pushing and pulling here with my scissors, the hair. I'm going to bring this in this a little bit more here so it just kind of lays into the ear by itself. And there you might, yeah, you got to feel it, you know, keep it, like I said, you know where your skin's at. Keeps looking down, that's not very helpful. I'm going to have a dog headstand here in a minute. <laughs> Some static. We've got some serious October dryness going on here. You guys remember what to do in those other videos. You're gonna do get some water involved. Not a lot, but a little, just to kind of calm that static down. Put some moisture. I guess suppose you could have a humidifier in your salon. I have one at the house for. They're great for heart disease pets and breathing problem pets, and I've had those. So I have one at the house. I might bring it here. Might utilize it. Not sure yet. I could test it to see if it actually what does put enough moisture in the air that affects grooming, you know. Okay, that's about as much as I probably want to do right now. So, what do you think? Not bad for about like eight minutes. Eight minute haircut on the face. Oh, that's the camera. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. We'll be back after the bath. Let me get a. He's cute, huh? You're so cute.
You're so cute. You're so cute, Cotton. Yes, you are. Okay, here we go again. And we are here with Cotton again. And we are done with the blow drying. I did not bone dry blow dry him. So he's a tiny, tiny bit damp. It gives me some moisture to work with. And we're going to brush them all out and we should be almost good to go. So here we go. Oh, and in the meantime, I'm going to text mom and say I'll be done in 10 to 15 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. That way she can be on her way. I know she doesn't love it when her baby is waiting. I'm going to put 12 minutes, buys me a couple extra minutes. Done in 12 minutes and then I do an estimate total that I think it'll be. actually give her a total. Okay. All right. So he's sitting down. I'm going to put, stand him up. Come here, baby. Just kind of help me work faster. We're going to redo everything we did, which is we're going to start brushing him and it should be pretty good. So the blow dryer just kind of tangles the hair a little bit. And, um, come on there, buddy. And I'm not digging because we already did a major brushing, so there shouldn't be a lot that I have to detangle. I just want to straighten everything out and make sure that we're all pretty even from the guard, you know? Okay. So now I'm kind of quickly going over everything again. He's so adorable. He's a dopest talking thing. We'll come back and when we actually do um, trimming up, we'll use the brush and go backwards a little bit to kind of... When the dog gets home and it's moving, okay, I know you want to move off the dog up stand. Just stay there if you're okay. When the dog gets home and starts moving, you want to kind of have that hair going, you know, move it this way and that way to try to capture anything that is straggly. And then if you happen to have the dog waiting in the salon a little while, you might see some flurry movement of the hair that got missed. Just get the dog and redo, redo that area real fast or trim it right there that you see it, you know. stand up. Doesn't matter right now, but in general, I've already just did a hand plucking of the ear hair uh, right before the bath because there was barely anything in there. So make sure you do get the ears and we're going to clean them last. So the wetness of the ear cleaner doesn't affect my hair cutting. So we're going to do that absolutely last. kind of pulling backwards here. We don't want him to do that. So this will help him stay stood up. Get my foreguard back on the clippers here. Just get the stuff sticking out everywhere. See, when hair is a little dirty, you still get stuff out after the dry, you know? So you want to come make sure you got it all.
Grab both ear hairs, look up so you can kind of see what's going on down here so it looks good. Good. Remember, we got 12 minutes. We're working quickly. We're not messing around. Now that he's moved off the dog upstairs, I'm going to come finish off his uh, sides, you know. Okay. I'm going to get this hair out of the way so we can look at the paws. See if you guys can see the paw here, the paws as I work with them. So, just come down like this. I'm not taking a lot off, I'm just going to go around the nails and stuff, just shaping them, I guess you would say. And this whole stand up situation. Again, this comes in handy. Come in here, just straighten some of that hair out, straight down. If you need these scissors, these are great. Actually, pretty no, not not super sharp. They're pretty dull, but not dull like pulling hair dull. So, if you need some equipment, please let me know. I will get you what you need. Um, I get you what you need and maybe make some recommendations. I've been using all kinds of tools and I'm one to really try out the tools before I sell them. So if it's not something I like, it's not gonna it's not gonna sell. I'll just I won't bring it into the salon. I'll use it and get rid of it or give it away. And it looks like my battery's gonna die, so I'm gonna wrap this up here in a minute. Thanks for watching, Didi um, Didi Croy on YouTube. Please subscribe. Helps give me some data to work with. Uh, where you guys are from, what you guys are watching, how you're finding me, all that helps me. And then we'll find it, we'll finish it off with doing the last tidbit of the face here. And the video will probably die, so thanks for watching, y'all. So I'm actually going to curve this down around a little bit here so it's not too wet later keeps looking down sometimes if you accidentally cut too much it's good because then you actually have to take it down a little bit shorter and do a little bit more rounding which cleans it up a little bit more so if you actually take too much off don't worry in this case I'm leaving his uh, whiskers alone what I've noticed on my own dogs is once you trim the whiskers, they become needles. Okay. Ouch, that was my elbow. Okay. I don't like to do the, um, I don't like leaving any eyelashes. It causes a lot of watery eyes. So you'll see that I usually like to take them off unless special requested to leave them on. And that's because with my Duke, who's passed away, um, I learned that I loved the eyelashes and I used to leave them on. Well, it caused his eyes to water all the time. Got rid of them and it helped a lot. You didn't have to worry about his eyes so much. So here while I'm grooming, I'll take them down unless requested to keep them. So now I'm just kind of curving everything around and making sure any, um, anything that was came up during the blow drying and stuff, bring it forward and back. And sometimes a little is enough. Just do some curving and be done. The more you keep going, the see, looks good, right? See if you guys can get closer here. See, just a little. And that was all guard work. Save your hands, people. Save your hands. I'm gonna bring my ten back out and kind of work underneath his uh, back legs here, but we're good. Okay, mom's walking in probably. Right there. Give me about two more minutes. Okay. 
in energy right a lot of big difference so every pet's different you never know so here we go we're gonna get 